What up, y'all? It's your boy Don from Celsius Fits, and we're here with Drix in his private studio downtown Toronto. And this is Behind the Designs. Let's get right to it. So, Drix, tell us about yourself. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, my name is Drix, obviously. My brand is self-titled, it's called Drake's. I'm um, from Richmond Hill, Ontario. Yeah. And I'm a fashion designer currently based in Toronto out of my private studio. Yeah, that's a little bit about me. So when did you start the brand? I started the brand in 2015, back in high school. Um, mm -hmm. Back then it was sort of very different than what it is now. It was sort of just printing on like blanks and you know, simpler items. Um, and it all started very organically. I was just drawing on like hats and t-shirts. And then uh, my boys were like, yo, put it on a hat and sell it. And I was like, all right. Um, yeah, so back in Richmond Hill, there was this embroidery spot that uh, just down the road from me. Yeah. And uh, I bought my hat from the dollar store and I begged this lady at the embroidery store to like, just, just do one item for me and that was it. But she kept hassling me saying like, nah, you gotta bring me 30, 40. And I was like, nah, I was very persistent. So I kept going back to her and she finally printed it out on one hat, yeah. or sorry, embroidered it on one hat. And uh, that's sort of what uh, snowballed everything else. I was like, let me not do more than one hat. I mean, let me do more than one hat. I ended up doing like 30, 40, and then pushing the numbers. So yeah, you came on my radar because I remember you did a fashion art Toronto runway. I remember like, I felt like I was there and I was living that through the phone. Yeah. Tell our viewers what went into that preparation for that. Yeah, I mean, well, FAT, man. So, oh man, it was a, a long three grueling months of just like, just locking myself in the studio. Um, and just making sure that I was putting out something that I would enjoy. Cause it was my mm -hmm. first ever time ever doing a collection that was, you know, available to the public arena. So I wanted to make sure it was very well thought out and, you know, very personable and something that people could resonate with yeah. and uh, leave the show with a piece of something as well too. So I spent a lot of months obviously making clothes and, you know, day in, day out. Um, but I also spent a lot of months like with my interns, like working on how we were going to market the show mm -hmm. and how the show was going to be more of just clothes and yeah. an actual experience. Um, because I don't know, I feel like as a designer, you shouldn't limit yourself to just clothes. Like you're so much Facts. more creative than that, right? So Facts. you got to have to wear all different types of hats. And that's what I kind of uh, used going into the show. I, I wanted to make the show sort of uh, a celebration to my people. And it's you know, yeah, a celebration to, you know, what people like me and you go through, right? Yeah. Um, so that's very much what I was inspired by and a lot of like 90s hip hop and early like 2000s rap. Um, and again, very much like the, the ghetto black scene, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, something that's used so much in the industry, but we never get the credit. Yeah. Um, and that's what I want to do. I want to, you know, make sure ghetto fashion was also seen as luxurious as well too, because these other designers do it and, or not not that they, they do it, they just don't give us the credit. Yeah. Or it's just not seen as something as luxurious, but it's like, man, my culture is just as luxurious as the next. That's tough, yeah. that's yeah. tough. Um, I remember watching an interview and you talked about not getting into Ryerson fashion yeah. like first time and then getting in the second time, I believe. Mm -hmm. How did that hardship change your career path or maybe even inspire you? Yeah, yeah. So it's crazy you say that because yeah, you're not getting into Ryerson, at the time when it happened, I was like, man, am I really meant to do this? You know, when I first got the, the denial, I was like, man, I don't, I don't know if I'm even meant to be a designer. Yeah. And I was like, man, fuck that, you know, like at the end of the day, it's so, it's so subjective. So the, the viewer who even saw my portfolio, they're coming from a bias um, opinion as well too. So I was like, you know what? I believe in my design and I believe in my creativity. So let me go for it again. Um, and luckily it worked, but before that I ended up studying at a whole couture academy. Yeah. So I did a lot of like women's wear, but like my other designer friends were laughing because I hate women's wear and like I'm so bad at designing women's wear. Um, but I did it and uh, shout out uh, Joanne Dice, she was my teacher there. Um, shout out Joanne. <laughs> yeah, shout out Joanne, you know. And um, yeah, I ended up reapplying and got in. I got a hate, I got a hate love relationship with, with post-secondary schooling. I don't think everyone's meant for it and I don't even think I was meant for it. But in a weird way, it actually shaped me to be the designer I am today because I was so like, not looked down upon, but I was like the complete opposite to a lot of people that go to design school. Like, mm -hmm. I was very different from my colleagues. Um, and my, my, my profs would be a testament to that as well too. But I think in a way it actually shaped the designer who I am today. Like almost not enjoying design school yeah. helped me find a path to be the designer that I wanted to be mm -hmm. in design school in a weird way. So. I don't know, I would recommend people to go to school like yeah. for it if they're lacking the 
the actual physical skills of learning how to sew. Yeah. Um, but if you're creative and you have a vision, then I don't think it's necessary. Go for it. Yeah, it's so subjective. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You kind of touched on something that I want to go back to. Mm -hmm. uh, your first inspiration in fashion. Uh, yeah. I think we were talking earlier, you said something about your mother. Yeah, Mama Dukes, you know. <laughs> uh, I feel like, uh, you know, growing up in a Jamaican household, mm -hmm. it's very, uh, well for me, I, I got pretty lucky because I know a lot of people who do grow up in a Jamaican household and it's very strict stuff, right? But uh, my mom was very supportive, you know, she she as well was dabbled in the, the fashion realm. Yeah. Um, she was always like styling and doing interior design as well. She still runs her interior styling company, like just as a side hobby. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I got into fashion, just being around her and being in the mix. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure, for sure. Your brand, Idrix. Yeah. If I gave you five years, where do you see it? Man, you know, my, my answer to that changes actually all the time. And you, That's a good thing. Yeah, it's it's weird. I don't know, like, if you would have asked me last year, I would have said I want to be, like, the next, like, luxury brand and mm -hmm. all this whatnot. But I think for me, it's it's kind of a little bit more simplified now. I just want to be, like, I just want to be a brand that's just known for pushing the boundaries and as well as, um, like, staying true to quality. Because at the end of the day, like, I'll never release anything that looks sick, but the quality's garbage. Mm -hmm. It's just not who I am. So I think in the next five years, I, I want to be known as a brand that no matter what they release, whether it's like miscellaneous items like lighters or even like socks or even like coat hangers, like yeah. they're still going to be good quality. So I just want people to just like, when they, when they see Drake's, they think quality. A big part of fashion is culture. Uh, with culture, that brings sports, music, and everything together. Mm -hmm. When it comes to sport, is there anybody or any league or any sport that you'd love to style? Yeah, for sure. Uh, if I would, if I were able to style any anyone in a league or any athlete, I, I think it would actually be uh, his name's J. B. Monty, and they call him the uh, the Michael Jordan of bull riding. Um, wow. Yeah, he's a bull rider out in like Texas. That's Oh, yeah, man. so I would love to, yeah, right? I would love to, like, style a full look for when he's out, like, riding a bull. Yeah. Um, I'd probably put him in, like, a full skeleton suit or some crazy shit like that. That would look crazy. Like, someone on a bull is, like, just riding, like, on a bull and, like, they're wearing, like, complete drakes and, like, I don't know. I feel like they're not they're not really swaggy out there. Like, the bull riders, they kind of yeah. just wear the same traditional clothing. But, I mean, I think it'd be sick to, like, bring in, like, the streetwear world into it. All right, so we're going to get by drakes to style somebody today. We brought in Alonzo Adai from the CFL. Hey, how you doing? Good, I'm good. Alonzo Dai, who are you playing for right now? I play for Ottawa Red Blacks in the CFL number 20. Play safety. Proper, proper. How would you describe your style? Uh, I would say relaxed, you know, comfortable, never trying to do too much. Kind of simple, playing, you know, stay simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I hear that, I hear that. Uh, do you have any athletes that you look up to and like kind of get inspiration for what you're wearing? Um, I mean, I like guys that push the limit for sure. So like Jalen Ramsey, Odell Beckham, those type of guys, you know, they, I feel like, especially in the football realm, a lot of guys do like to keep it simple. So like they kind of step outside that box and yeah. I respect it for sure. For sure, for sure. And you seeing the By Drake studio, seeing what he's rocking, what are you expecting today? I think I'm gonna get on my comfort zone today. <laughs> I think yeah, I'm gonna get on my comfort zone, but I'm excited. You know, the pieces look amazing. The studio's been great. We've been vibing, having a good time. So excited for sure. All right, let's get right to it. Definitely rocking with the shades, though.
by Drake's. What do you think about the second look here? I think for the second look, I'm going to go a little bit more um, blue collar. That's what I like to call it. So a little bit more like a like a working man's fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but just using fabrics that aren't seen in workwear. So I'm going to go for that a little bit more. Made this <laughs> in one day. Yeah, well, maybe less. Maybe like kind of. Yeah, less than one day. <laughs> less than one day. I'm admiring this shit. I'm admiring this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never seen nothing like this. Like, oh. Got all my supplies in here. Yeah. On roll, throw your keys in there. <laughs> Have the. Yeah. In there. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, this is not something that I would normally pick out, like the baggy jeans, but I feel good. I feel comfortable in it. Like it wasn't like I was putting it on and felt out of place, you know what I'm yeah, saying? It made yeah. me feel confident, if anything. By Jake, what do you think with the third style? Yeah, so I kept the first two a little bit more simple. Um, not super simple, but something where, like you said, you can still feel it in his comfort zone. Um, but this one, we're gonna kinda get out of his comfort zone a little bit to see uh, what he's rocking with. And, you know, him being a football player too, they get into these uh, these beast mindsets, you know, to get onto the field, right? So, might as well put him in a full animal, animal yeah, print. Yeah, I feel that. Okay, so, so you were styled three times today. Uh, out of the three, which were your favorites? Oh, it's a tough decision, honestly. You <laughs> held it down with, with all three options. Honestly, I would pick this one as my favorite. I think you kind of described it, you know, that alter ego, you know, playing football and turning on that beast mode mentality. And I feel like when I put this on, it kind of like made me feel like that off the bat. So, you know, and like, like I said before, it's like real comfortable material. And I like the swag. I like the color and everything. So two things by Drake's. How long did that jacket take you to make? This one, this one's pretty simple because there's no lining. It's just a straight jacket. It says simple. <laughs> <laughs> that, that took me like without, well, people understand, but without patterning and cutting, like just straight sewing, uh, it was only like four hours. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. And your favorite fit of the day? Ooh, that's a tough one. I mean, I really like this fit. I also like the the first fit as well too. Um, just not something you see like who be wearing a vest underneath a jacket like that. Yeah, that's um, totally different vibe. But no, they're all they, they're all they're different all, vibes. I like them all. Yeah. So that's crazy though because we have fit three, fit one. For me, it was fit two mm. because that one crazy. The baggy jeans with the <laughs> you know ankle monitor type oh, yeah, hood fashion that was insane. Yeah. So, so I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Buy Drakes for having us today. Uh, what did you think about the whole experience? Let's start with Alonzo and all. Experience was real cool. Like like I said, you know, I, I knew I was gonna get out of my comfort zone a little bit, but everything was super like cool. Just being put in different styles, different looks. You know, it brought out some something in me that I might go to the store now and pick up something different than I'm used to. So yeah. it was a great experience. Each one of the pieces was very like unique in itself. So I had a great time. And you, so, and you buy yours? I, I had a great time, man. I mean, again, to to be able to style someone of his caliber is, is, you know, it's an honor and as well as to be able to get him out of his comfort zone. Um, that's a big thing too, but also not feel too uncomfortable. Um, so I enjoyed that and, you know, working with you too and you're a great host. We'll definitely be in contact because I'm getting some of this good. <laughs> and by for Drake. sure. Uh, again, yeah. Thank you guys for having me. Dante, Alfredo behind the camera and DC as well. Um, yeah, great experience. So one of the Best interviews I've had for sure. Yeah, Thank good you. time. You guys know what it is. It's Don from Celsius Fits, and this is Drake's behind the designs. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs>